What's going on guys, Etika from the Etika World Network here and welcome to my Kamui slash Corin analysis video for January 2016. Now there's going to be a couple of these that will be done because we're obviously going to get more information when we actually get the character but for now we're going to break this character down from analysis of the trailer and you can go to a specific part of this video since it is kind of long and you can check what my opinion is or what my analysis is of every individual move. There's a table of contents in the description so go and check that out if you don't want to you know stick around for a bunch of the intro or other stuff that you don't really care about you can go to the exactly the part that you want anyways we are going to be breaking down every single detail of Kamui slash Corin from Fire Emblem Fates which is a character that I'm extremely passionate about but I know some of you are like wait Etika who the fuck is this Kamui person you keep referring to? Well, just to explain myself a little bit, Fire Emblem Fates was originally revealed to us quite a while ago, but we were shown everything in detail with Japanese names, so I got to learn this character as Kamui. And then when I saw the English name would be Corin, didn't really sit well with me. So I'm just going to call her Kamui from now on. I guess you might say, okay, well, what's the deal with Robin then? Why don't you call Robin Refle? Well, that's because I learned Robin as a Robin. Like, I didn't learn Robin from the Japanese release because I wasn't into Fire Emblem way back then. And, but plus, I don't even think, like, Refle is a good name in the first place. Um, I think the coolest name for Robin is Darian in French, but I'm already used to Robin, so whatever. So when it comes to Kamui from Fire Emblem, when I say Kamui, maybe you can just think of the female Kamui. When I say Corin, you can think of the male. I think Corin is better for the male Kamui for the female but I'm getting too in detail with it just know I'm gonna refer to him him slash her as Kamui from now on okay also in this video I'm going to be breaking down a lot of frame data now I'm not a professional player by any means you all know this however this doesn't mean that I don't have an eye for judging frame data at glance and you know that's not something that's a professional skill anyone can judge frame data in Smash Brothers all you need is a good sense of timing understanding of how frames work with seconds and poof you can decide frame data just as well um, on your own regard. Don't worry, I'm, I, I know some of you are like, oh, well, how are you talking about moves when you suck at Smash? Well, well, think about this. Do you have to play basketball on a professional level to understand the game's mechanics? Do you have to be a pro player yourself in order to understand how certain formations work, um, what players' certain strengths are? No, observing the game and being knowledgeable about it is quite enough when it comes to commentating or making decisions or even you know judging moves in Smash Brothers. I mean, you know, you got commentators in the game who aren't pro players necessarily, but they're still able to commentate well and they know the game fully. So that's the same perspective I'm going to be taking today, breaking down the frame data and giving you guys what my opinion is on how Kamui will be played. And not even my opinion, but rather just the facts in terms of how Kamui looks as a character, the moves and all that. So um, let's get into it. It's funny though, I say let's get into it, but we have to get into the nitty gritty of the character themselves. And I'm talking about the appearance, the aesthetics. And this is one of the things that I usually use to judge if I'll play character the most the look and the feel and the origin of the character and how they behave their persona and things like that and Kamui is definitely a complex deep character there's a lot to look at here since the male and the female basically have the same armor there's not too much differentiation besides a couple of uh, censorship issues by Nintendo but we're not gonna pay too much attention to that I guess I guess it doesn't really mean that much we have the character anyways I'm happy about that but the armor looking at that First detail, we can see it's very elegant, it's extravagant, it has a whole lot of complexity to it. There's apparently a bodysuit underneath all those metal plates, and this character can turn into a fucking dragon on top of it all. The armor complements this whole change really well because it seems like it has the ability to stretch along with the character. So when they turn into that dragon, they're not, you know, popping out everywhere. I love the look. Like, as I've said before, it seems very elegant, extravagant, almost regal in a way. And that's one thing that you get from Kamui when you first look at the character. First glance, it's a very royal character. You're definitely seeing a character in a high position, somewhere high up in the class system. And we're getting really, I'm telling you, we're getting deep into the character's design here, man. First off, I just love the contrast of the white hair and the red eyes. Really cool look, and it adds a certain primal sense to them where you know I mean you can obviously see it's a human but you can tell that there's a little something more animalistic about the character and I, and I love that I think it's a great variation I and mean, it adds a real unique sense to uh, Fire Emblem Lord which is really cool however now we have to go into one of the most seemingly odd details about this character Kamui has no goddamn shoes. Now, I know a lot of you might be confused about this um, design choice in the character, but I feel like it was an expert move made in so many ways. Now, first off, in terms of the character themselves, as you can see, Kamui is very heavily plated, which means this character is meant for combat. But at the same time, bearing no shoes 
is really good for combat as well too because I'm sure you all remember you know anime from back in the day and even now um, a lot of them actually do take their shoes off when they get into a serious fight like Goku and Raditz classic you know class one example um, when Goku was fighting his brother Raditz he took his shoes off because I think they were weighted and plus he wanted more dexterity more agility better movement more control of the battle and this is something that we see represented in Kamui here because even though the character has a lot of heavy plated armor it seems like the, the shoes being you know totally gone from the design is actually going to help with mobility so we can guess that the character will have a lot of speed added to them and it's a really cool look in general fighters usually don't wear shoes heavy you know like Ryu and whatnot because they feel like it slows them down so I love that design choice in that field and then plus in terms of functionality as you as I mentioned before Kamui does turn into a dragon so how useful would it be to, to have shoes on when they're probably going to get torn open every single time you transform it wouldn't be too functional for you now as we can see there's a bodysuit underneath the heavy armor but it looks like it stretches everywhere else in terms of the feet that would be a little bit too complex how can you make shoes that'll stretch like that the design of just going completely barefoot works for functionality wise you know you can't turn into a dragon and bust your Jordans every single time you know that, that you'll get pissed off after a while and now probably one of the deepest reasons behind the choice of no footwear for this character comes down to a deep personality trait obviously it gives the character a more earthly kind of feel and considering they can turn into a dragon it works well with that persona but at the same time we know for a fact Kamui is a very giving selfless generous character I mean the person has two families to divide themselves between and their choice in the whole game is basically who they will give themselves to this is a character who was willing to put it all on the line to be able to help others out. A very selfless kind of person who's all about servicing others. And this is something that we've seen a lot in various religious texts, whereas saints and other people who are willing to give to people don't wear footwear because it feels as if it puts them in the league above everyone else, as footwear was a luxury for humans for a while. It was. Overall, it humbles the character. It makes Kamui seem like, even though I have all this regal, elegant armor, I'm not someone who has their head in the clouds. Rather, who's very grounded, down to earth, understand the problems of the world, and is willing to give themselves to help those problems out. This is a very big part of what makes Kamui Kamui, and I love that attribute of the character. And another reason as to why I'm excited to play with them in Fire Emblem Fates. It's an awesome design choice. And plus, it's kind of kinky too. But anyways, we're moving on from that. <laughs> <laughs> After breaking down everything about the character's attributes in terms of uh, their personality, their looks, we have to get to the most important part, their integration in Smash Brothers. And remember, when Daddy Sakurai puts somebody in Smash, he makes sure that he does so with them being as honest to their original game as possible. So this is something that we can guarantee with Kamui. So maybe looking at Kamui's Fire Emblem Fate stats can give us a little bit of a window as to what kind of character they'll be in Smash. I was debating myself on this, maybe yes, maybe no, but I think it's still worth a look anyways. So if we're looking at the growth rates of Kamui in Fire Emblem Fates, we can see that the HP growth rate is 60, Strength 60, Magic 40, Skill 50, Speed 50, Luck 55, Defense 45, and Resistance 30. Now obviously, considering this is the main character of the Avatar, you can customize them and choose which stat you want boosted, but these are just the raw stats if you didn't boost anything. And as you can see, they're pretty much almost even, they're, they're well balanced, but there's a little bit of emphasis when it comes to the speed, um, even though the speed is 50% and the strength. Now I know, we have the luck and the skill stat, but I'm not sure how well those will translate into Smash Brothers performance, I suppose. So if we take out luck and skill, the highest stats are speed and strength. So maybe that can give us a window as to what kind of character this will be. A very speedy, strong kind of fighter, potentially even a glass cannon considering their defense is significantly lower than some of their other stats. But whatever, that doesn't really give us the full story. So we have to look to the trailer to break down the moves, the frame data, and truly see what kind of character this is. Alright, so let's get into the jab. I'm actually kind of excited about this because there's not many sword users that have a jab which comes out as fast as Kamui's does. Considering how fast that first jab comes out, it's got to be at around frame 2, 3, or 4. That's my estimate. So that's pretty goddamn fast considering that Kamui has a sword but doesn't use the sword for that first jab. The rapid jab looks great too because it seems like it has amazing range. Um, as you can see, Captain Falcon's getting fucked up from quite a ways away from Kamui. So overall, it's great. And the fact that that first jab comes out so quickly means that potentially there's there might just be a lot of jab reset opportunities from when the character doesn't tech. As you guys can see, soon after the landing, immediately right into the jab. 
that thing has to come out at around frame two, three, or four. I think two to four, two to four. That's not the duration of the jab, but just how fast it comes out. I mean, I could measure duration, I suppose, but that's a little bit tougher to do, in my opinion. But um, I'm really good at just estimating when the move comes out. Um, anyways, it seems like the jab overall is great. Amazing range on that multi-hit jab, um, and it might just reset on landings without teching. Great overall. Next, we have the forward tilt, and this, I'm guessing, comes out at around frame 8, 9, or 10. So that's relatively quick, a lot faster than Robin, and that is my main, so yes, I will be doing a lot of comparisons to Robin in this. It also seems like it has a slight hitbox behind Kamui, so if we pause it really quick, as you can see, as the blade swings around, it seems like the, the aura of the blade goes behind Kamui a little bit, so potentially maybe a hitbox back there. It seems like there's also some significant end of frame lag, even though the move does come out relatively quick. As you guys can see here, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. Um, I guess it's a little bit tough to tell. We don't really have the character in our hands, but it does seem like there's some end lag on that forward tilt. Um, also, it doesn't really seem like there'll be too much follow-up because of it. Um, the move seems to have some decent knockback, but um, potentially you might not be able... I don't see the character jump at all after the forward tilt anywhere in the trailer, so... It's kind of hard to tell if you'll be able to have follow-up from it, but the knockback is good, and uh, it could potentially be a kill move at really high percentages, so we'll see. Overall, I'm excited about the 4-tilt, just from how fast it comes out. Next, we have the down tilt. This is one of the moves that I'm extremely excited about, because from what we saw in the trailer, it seems like this is going to have some amazing follow-up. Um, we can see that you're able to pop up a character with the blade as well, too, and it comes out decently fast. I'm guessing it's gotta be frame five, six, seven, or potentially even eight, but it's going to be a fast move. You can see how quick that shit comes out right here. Um, when you're actually using it against Little Mac in the trailer, um, I don't know if we can go back on this, but we can definitely go forward. As you guys can see, right here in fact we got to go all the way back here yeah as you guys can see this is when you're in neutral crouch position and then suddenly one that move comes out quick as hell man i'm guessing it's got to be at around five six seven maybe not even eight five six or seven is my estimate and frame lag on it doesn't really seem too bad either because in the trailer kamui is able to follow up on little mac with it, it seems like it's going to be a great combo to all early percentages as well And now we have the up tilt, which is definitely a quick move. It comes out at around frame 6, 7, or 8. And as you guys can see, the follow-up may be a little bit difficult with it because the lag on the end of the move is there. I mean, after using it on Cloud, you, as you can notice, the character doesn't move right away out of it. So it seems like you're going to have to wait a little bit in order to be able to follow up after using the move. Kind of sucks, but the fact that it comes out so fast is a redeeming quality. And plus, it does seem like it lasts a while too. I can't really guess the duration in terms of the frames, but you can see that the move lasts quite a bit and it has a great radius as well. And it also seems like, at least for Donkey Kong, that it hits in front of Kamui too. So the hitbox is large, but that might not work on smaller characters like Pikachu. And um, so maybe mostly for the human characters, but um, if you're smaller, you're gonna not you're gonna basically be able to crouch out of this move or just potentially even stand out of it. So either way, the move comes out quickly, but it does have some end frame lag. And this seems like the trait that sticks with Conway for the moves that we've covered so far. Alright, so now we're going into the run speed, and this is something that's pretty goddamn obvious, I suppose from the decision of not having shoes, but Kamui moves quick. The run speed seems like it's really high for this character. I really can't find something to compare it to, since we don't really see Kamui running alongside anybody for extended duration in the trailer, but just seeing these few moments of when the character is actually moving, you can tell that distance covered is a lot for that small amount of time. So we could potentially have a Fire Emblem character that moves faster than Marth or Roy. Pretty exciting. Next up, we have a very unique looking dash attack, and this move I'm curious about because I'm not sure if there's going to be a hitbox on Kamui's body when they pull it off. Now, I'm guessing that the dash attack is going to come out at around frame 10, 11, or 12. And first off, we can just tell that it's a really cool looking move, that whole spin blade drill thing. I I'm loving that. It seems like it also has great range on top of it all. The move lasts a little while too. Um, I'm just wondering, is there a hitbox on Kamui's body? We need to know, but we didn't see the move get used too much, just one time. So overall, I'm excited to see what the future of this move is. It seems like it has significant end frame lag as well too. So maybe the follow-ups won't be too possible with this, but once again, we don't have the character in our hands, so we can't tell for a fact. We'll have to wait and see. 
So now we have the throws. Now the pummel... So we have the throws now, and the pummel does seem a little bit lame. I was hoping that it potentially used that whole saw function of the Yato Blade to damage them for the pummel, and that it would be quicker, but it's not. We can deal. But the throw itself looks pretty badass. The whole up throw to nest turning into the dragon, I'm hoping that's got to be a potential kill throw, or at least do a whole lot of not back, or potentially even a combo tool, which might just be the case for the back throw, but we don't really see throws being used into combos too much with the trailer, so all we can do is guess. But the throw for the up one looks goddamn cool. So now let's look at Kamui's role. This is something that I got super excited about at first, but after doing some testing, I realized that maybe there's not too much to this. It seems like a pretty standard role at first, but I thought that the distance at one point was extremely large for this role. Um, if we look at how it is on the um, on the boxing ring stage, look at this. Look at the distance that Kamui is at the um, outer edge of the circle, and then when Kamui does the roll, he goes goddamn almost past the middle of the circle oh he goes well past the middle look at that i think that roll distance is pretty goddamn far but i did some testing with a character like Sheik and characters like pikachu and whatnot and i saw that the distance was somewhat the same so maybe there's not too much here um i i think the roll distance is pretty goddamn far but you guys have to break this down for yourselves um maybe it's not that impressive but to me it looks crazy i don't know I don't know, maybe my judgment is off on this one. Um, like I said, I went to the same stage and did the same test with different characters, and some of them got to that far, some of them didn't. So I don't know what the standard roll distance is for all the characters overall on average, so I can only make my guesses here, but I think that roll is massive. So now we have the forward air. We didn't really see it used too much in the trailer, just twice, but in this we can see that the move has some really good range and it comes out relatively quick at around frame seven or eight is what my guess is going to be um even though the range is good on this it does seem like it has some lag in the air after you use it and it does have some landing lag on it as well too so follow-up is a little bit questionable with this kind of a move but i'm hoping it'll be there at early percentages to be able to get some combos in we can see that that shulk didn't really have too much damage on him when hit with the forward air but the follow-up with corin wasn't there as much like there was a certain point where corin did follow up with a forward tilt but shulk could have air dodged or jumped at that point it's kind of hard to judge at this point but I know for a fact the forward air comes out quick. It has some lag in the air, some lag on landing. Follow up isn't a question mark. So next we have the up air and there's a lot to tell about this move. You can see it comes out really quick at around frame six, seven or eight. So pretty much on status with like Roy's up air or something like that, a really fast move. The range seems pretty good on it too as it's able to hit all around Corrin. So um, put, to, put you in mind of a couple of other characters who have a great up air like that, maybe even like um, Marth or something. But the move also does seem like it has some kind of end lag on it. So follow up might just be questionable at this point. Uh, maybe at early percentages, you can potentially go in there with a double jump up air. But it's really hard to tell right now. But the move does come out fast, at least. End lag is a whole other question entirely. So now we have the back air. And this one was kind of hard to judge at first in terms of how fast it comes out. We see it used multiple times in the trailer, but it's hard to know when the hitbox really comes out. Um, I'm guessing that it's around frame 10 or 12. I'm not 100% I'm not sure on that though, so don't quote me, but I think it's 10 or 12. It seems like it has some serious knockback as well too, killing Meta Knight off the side of the stage like that. And I like the whole attribute of it pushing you forward, obviously. I'm not going to try to go through all the obvious facts with this, but the back air seems like a great move. It could be good for ledge play, and it also could be good for hitting you on shield, since it does push you forward while having a huge hitbox. So maybe the move could be used well in the neutral, but the thing that hurts it is the fact that there is some end lag when you land after using the back air. So even though it does push you forward, you're kind of left open for a few frames after that. So how good it could be in the neutral all depends on how quickly you're able to jump out of it as soon as you land. But I think it will be great for offstage play as it'll push you forward when you're on the edge while at the same time that huge hitbox touching their shield, you know, putting pressure on them. And the not back too, yeah, I'm loving it. It could be used almost like Robin's um, back air in a way. 
So now let's look at the down air. We only saw this used once, but the move seems like it's pretty beastly as it pushes you down. We don't know if it has a spike hitbox on it not or not because we didn't really see the smash ball move downward as the damage was being applied to it from that down air. So kind of hard to tell what direction it'll knock you in, but the move looks great. It's a multi hit. It comes out relatively quick at around frame 9, 10 or 11, 9, 11, I know. But um, it also might just be usable with the dragon lunge, which is something we're going to cover later on. But the dragon lunge um, jump, I, one option that you have when you stab somebody and you pin them is that you can actually jump out of it. This might just be usable on the landing. However, there might just be some landing lag when you hit the ground with this move. It seems like Corrin takes a couple of frames to stand up, and whether those are able to be moved out of right away or not, we'll have to wait and see. But there is some significant end lag on the move, at least from what we can tell right now. And now we have my favorite aerial move from Corrin slash Kamui. The neutral air and the reason why i love this move so much is that it comes out really goddamn fast now as i'm gonna break this down for you guys really quick um as you can see corn is in neutral standing position here we're gonna move forward a little bit a little bit a little bit here comes the jump this is still a neutral jump position neutral jump position now look at that we're only one frame in and already the swords are out right hitbox started right there that move comes out extremely quick. And this is something that, you know, we don't even have to slow it down for you guys to see. The move, in general, just comes out fast as fuck. Um, we can actually see it better with this shot of the neutral air. Um, let me see. Let's move back a little bit. I, I love this move, man. Like, you guys got to see it. And plus, it seems like it has a huge hitbox on it, man. And the, I'm guessing that the move comes out at around frame 4 or 6. That's my estimate. I know, 4 sounds like a, a whole lot of speed on it, but I'm it has to be a frame 4. To be honest, I think 6 is a little bit too much. I think frame 4 or 5 is accurate for this, but um, it lasts a while too. Um, like I said, I can't really do estimates in terms of how long the move will last frame-wise, but you can see it lasts quite a while, but it might just have a laggy landing and also be laggy in the air as well too. So as we can see, Corrin is in the neutral jump stance, right? And then bam, already, right into it, right into it, man. That shit is fast as hell, my boy. And this is great because, you know, considering that I use Robin most of the time, Robin's neutral air, it's not as quick. You know, I think the neutral air comes out around frame 12 or something. This one to come out of frame 4, this is going to be great in the neutral, I feel. And maybe the hitboxes might just work differently depending on the arm that has the Yato Blade and the arm that has the Dragon Fang. Now we have the forward smash, and as many of you might have guessed by now, it seems like there's going to be a hitbox on that charging animation, which is a first for any character in Smash Brothers. Really cool there. Um, I was really hoping that multi-hit would be for grabs, but it's all good at the end of the day. How interesting is it that Corrin has a hitbox on that charge? We'll have to see how well that works in competitive play, but it does come out relatively quick. If we're talking the Yato Blade um, multi-hit first, that seems like it comes out at around frame 8 nine or ten and it seems like that hitbox also rises the opponent in the air as you can see when it's used on luigi um let's actually go ahead in the video when it's used on luigi he actually rises as well as the wii fit trainer um i'm not sure how escapable that is maybe their di wasn't there and we, we these are all factors that we can't really guess but assuming that the person was inputting di maybe the move is inescapable so that could be great for you holding on to the opponent since it comes out relatively quick at eight or ten and then using the fang but if we're talking about just the fang part of the forward smash that comes out at around frame 15 or 17 if you're not using any charge with it um as we can see when it's used on shulk there's a couple of frames before that fang comes out so if the character that you're fighting is not directly next to you when you're using the yato blade part of the forward smash then you're going to have somewhat of a slow output, and you could potentially leave yourself open there. Obviously, as we all know, longest forward smash in the game, uh, potentially. Uh, I think it is. I think this is like the furthest range smash in the game, um, besides Palutena's up smash, I suppose. And, of course, also the sweet spot at the end of the blade, too. One thing that I found interesting is that the Dragon Fang is actually Corian's hand. You can see the fingers. Like, look closely. You can see the goddamn fingers there. The Dragon Fang, as you can see, this is the thumb. Um, let's go in a little bit closer. I know, maybe maybe I'm the first one to notice this, but that's the thumb, and those are the fingers right there. The Dragon Fang is always Corrin's hand. That is so fucking creepy. I mean, it's cool, I suppose, but goddamn, it looks a little a little weird when you see it in action. But um, yeah, <laughs> that's the fucking hand. Oh, but yeah, the forward smash overall, I'm super excited to see what kind of an effect on the metagame uh, a hitbox on your forward charge smash is going to be like. 
These are all things that we can only guess, but maybe it's going to be OP, maybe not. I also love the fact that the Fort Smash is aimable, as we can see with um, Wii Fit Trainer right there. So that's great. Most Fort Smashes have that attribute to them, though. Um, but however, the end lag on this move is significant, big time. So you're going to leave yourself open for quite a bit if you use this and you miss, but that's standard with almost anybody's Fort Smash. So whatever, you're going to have to deal. Also, I don't think the Forward Smash is as strong when the opponent is close to you. As we saw it being used on, which character was it? Was it Luigi that it was used on? Who was it? Who was it in this that was... Yeah, it was um, Wii Fit Trainer. I'm not sure how much percent that Wii Fit Trainer had on him, but it didn't seem like the Forward Smash had as much oomph to it when you're using it right there. So, all of these are in question right now, but so far the move looks interesting. we have the up smash and we didn't really see this used too much at all the move is kind of hard to judge because with this the close-up that we got of it we didn't really see it used from neutral standing position we saw it in progress of being used and then we saw it a little bit in the uh, little gameplay that we got kind of hard to tell exactly but um, i'm guessing that maybe it comes out at frame 12 to 14 um you know frame 10 uh, no, no no not frame 10 definitely not 10 but i'm guessing it's 12 13 or 14 the, ver the vertical hitbox is really high on this move and it looks like it might just have a sweet spot at the top as you can see that little shine that usually shows when you you know have a sweet spot in the move sometimes it also seems like there's going to be some significant end lag on this move and this is the case with a lot of core and stuff it seems like even though the moves come out decently fast you're going to have to wait a while after the fact But let's look at the down smash. Now this one was kind of hard to judge because we only see it once and we don't really see it used from neutral position. But if we're guessing that one frame before that we saw this move used was neutral, then um, it could be potentially as early as frame 12 or 11 up to frame 13. I don't think this reaches anything higher than 13, but um, that move comes out decently quick. Um, seems like the radius is really good too. Since it's a Yato Blade and the Dragon Fang, the hitboxes and the effects might be different on either sides of the character. There might just be a sweet spot on the Fang as we see that little shine at the end of it. And it does seem like there's some end lag on this move as well too. More significant than other characters. The down smash is a little bit more of a mystery to us. We didn't really see it used from start to finish, so we'll have to see. So now let's break down the Dragon Fang shot. This move comes out at around frame 12, 13, or 14. So relatively relatively long startup, but the effects of this move are great. I'm excited to use this one with B reversals because considering it has that little stun to it when you get hit with it, and I, I say that it comes out at around frame 12, 13, or 14 if you don't charge it at all, like if you're just tapping it. And I'm presuming that when it's used against Diddy Kong in this trailer, we're just seeing it tapped once. We're not seeing it with any charge on it. And speaking of charge, it doesn't seem like you'll be able to hold the charge on this move either. So you can't like fully charge it and then run around on the field. Although I guess that would be slightly OP. Considering that huge bite that happens at the end of it, I'm hoping that this move will be able to be used extremely well on the shield, potentially even being a shield breaker. I mean, it looks so goddamn devastating used against Falco that I'm, I'm hoping and praying that it does extreme damage to shield. But the stun attribute of this move is great enough. As I said, B reversals in the air will be a ton of fun with this character. However, the end lag is significant. So would you be able to come out of that end lag fast enough to follow up after doing a reversal in the air with a stun? Hard to tell at this point. And plus, it seems like the move moves you back slightly, although this one is too hard to tell. In some parts of this movie, it seems like it does move you back, as we saw with um, Toon Link there, but it's too early to tell at this point. I would like to think that it moves you back a little bit, but that would be kind of bad for follow-ups, I suppose. We also don't really see the distance of the move. We see it being shot, but we don't really see how far it'll travel. But the overall hitbox of that blast, when it's fully charged, is massive, as we saw it used in that little gameplay trailer here. As you can see, big-ass hitbox. So I'm excited about it. I just wish we had a little bit more information in terms of how easy it is to follow up after the fact. Now, let's go into my favorite special of Corrin slash Kamui, the Side B, aka Dragon Lunge. Now, the reason why I'm so hype about this move is because, first off, it's unique as hell. It pins the goddamn opponent, which, as a lot of players have mentioned before, would be amazing for, you know, doubles and whatnot, maybe even free-for-all. Um, overall, it's a great-looking move, and it has a lot of complexity to it, many layers to this move. So, first off, let's analyze the frame data. When it's used on the ground, as you guys could see from earlier, it seems like using it on the ground gives you a little bit of a jump 
so the character whoop, and then they do it so i'm guessing with that little jump there as soon as the hitbox comes out it's like around frame 20. frame 20 to 22 on the ground however when you use this move in the air how fast it comes out changes a bit so when used against marth as you can see neutral position Let's look at it used in the air really quick. You guys could tell that it comes out at around frame 20 when used on the ground, but in the air is a different story. So as we can see, she's in neutral jumping position, neutral jumping, and then bam, goes straight into that shit. So already the move is coming out. There's no little jump in the air when Kamui does the dragon fan, I mean, excuse me, the dragon lunge. It just starts almost immediately. And then, bam, that comes out so fast in the air. So I'm guessing at around frame eight or 10. That sounds a little bit too fast, and maybe my estimate will be off. Maybe it'll be two frames faster, than, two frames slower than that, but eight or 10. No more than 12 frames on this. No more than 12. We can also see from the trailer that it pins you for at least one second. Mario here is pinned for like, you know, a good, we don't really know his damage though, so this is gonna be another hard attribute to tell. We can't really see the percentages of these characters, but it seems like it'll be able to pin you for at least a second or two, which is definitely enough time for be able to come up with a follow-up. With the options that you have out of this move, the jump one seems like it will be the most compatible with the down air, which is that multi-hit drill kick that pushes you down. So we'll see overall. I'm wondering if there's going to be a hitbox on that down air after you collide with the ground, similar to like Bowser's down air. So now let's actually talk in more detail about the kicks, because even though the kicks look really cool, it seems like there might potentially be a follow-up if you use the forward kick or the back kick. The kick knocks the character forward, but it also pushes you directly underneath them. So I'm wondering, if you use that kick on somebody, would you be able to potentially follow up with an up air? Or would the lag on the kick be too long to be able to do any significant kind of combo follow-up? Hard to tell, but as you can see with Greninja, it slid Corrin right underneath that motherfucker. I'm excited about that potential. Um, I don't know if you can jump out of that so easily, but as you can see right there, Corrin is in a prime position underneath Robin and Ike to do some potential damage there. Uh, maybe even an up smash um, forward air, I think potentially possible too, but we don't know how long that lag is gonna be. Another thing that I wanna talk about is that the cancel option in terms of what you can do with the side B, as you can see, Mario is in tumble on the ground too. He's actually in prime position for a jab reset right there. And that's considering the jab comes out at round frame two, three or four, I think that potentially you can do a jab follow-up with the um, cancel option. We'll have to see, uh, but I think it's possible. And the combo potential would be huge if that was something that you could do with the side B. Not to mention the kick travels goddamn far. Either direction, the way you use it, you'll be able to use it to escape certain situations. Would you be able to use the kick when you're just in standard pin position? Yes, because we see female Kamui on the side of the stage with Mario use the kick even though Mario didn't get pinned at all. So considering that, you can pin the ground without having a target and then use the kick to push yourself forward, give yourself some momentum, the same way female Kamui used there. I love it. Next up, we have the Dragon Ascent. And this move seems a little bit more standard, I suppose, to me than you know other moves. I'm happy that it has a hitbox on it, though, which is a big plus. The move also does seem like it has some decent startup. Seems like it comes out at around frame 15, 16, or 17. 17 the the most i don't think it's any longer than 17. the hitbox is amazing on this first off um if we look at this paused we can actually see that the end of the move has the widest looking hitbox with the wings expanding fully at that point but it only lasts for one frame and it just or one or two oh okay it lasts a little bit longer than i thought it did but overall it's not all that quick as we can see here it kind of just stretches out a little bit at the end so this would be great for recovering to the stage, not having to worry about anything, unlike Robin does all the time whenever using the up B. But overall, it seems like a really good move. Um, Multi-hit as well, which is a plus. The knockback seems decent too, as it was used on Kirby, and he flew a pretty good distance away. So did um, Pit and then Pit 2. And it may hit the ledge at an angle if you aim it the right way. So, you know, when recovering, that wing may just go through the ground a bit, considering how wide out it is. And you can use that to give yourself somewhat of a safe landing in some situations, but somebody could just block that shit and grab you afterwards. But we'll have to see. I'm hoping that it snaps to ledge too. I'm really hoping that it snaps to ledge. We don't really see it used on a ledge that you can um, grab too much in the trailer at all, rather. We don't see it, so I'm hoping. And, I mean, and now we have the counter, but I mean, it's a standard counter. I don't know what you guys want me to say about this, man. I mean, how do you, how do you analyze a counter too much? It's a counter, though, man. I mean, I'm guessing that it comes out at around frame 8 to 10. 
And uh, in terms of the attack after, when you do the dragon transformation, you hit the two um, characters at like frame 22 or whatever. But you can't escape from it either way. The radius is wide as hell on that thing. So overall, the counter looks amazing too, just aesthetically wise. But at the end of the day, all it is is a counter. But that's basically it, man. Anything else that I did not cover in this, I just didn't have enough information for or enough knowledge to cover, you know, jump distance and whatnot. Those are things that are going to be more complex that I don't think we can break down as easily in the trailers. But for most part, I think we broke down everything that this character has to offer. So from all the information that we have from all the moves right now, one thing that we can easily say with Kamui is that the moves will come out fast. This is a fast character but there is going to be some lag on them as well too. So we have a speedy fighter with a lot of range, some significant lag, and really fast moves. I don't know what kind of a recipe he was going for with this kind of a person, but um, I'm excited about it. I can't wait to see how this character is used. We also don't really have too much indication in terms of the weight of the character either, so all of this will be in question, but overall, just judging from how the character looks in that little gameplay snippet that we got at the end of the trailer, it can be guessed that this is going to be somewhat of a fast faller, maybe. They'll be able to jump really fast, um, be really agile on the stage, have really quick moves, just a lot of lag at the end of them, and how how bad that will be for competitive play, we'll have to see. Maybe it won't be that significant. Um, either way, guys, I want to know what you thought of this little analysis video that I did. This kind of took a little bit of time for me to finish. There are a lot of details that I need to get out the way, and this is kind of the first video that I've done of this type. So let me know what you think. If I was inaccurate with any of the information, please feel free to let me know. Or if you have some different estimations as to what you feel like the moves will be with this character, also voice that opinion in the comments below. I'll be reading through them a lot. Um, like I said, first time doing a video like this, so all of your critique will be appreciated big time. I thank you once again for watching your boy for this long. I appreciate it. I'm hyped for this character in February. Wolf hasn't come out yet, so I could potentially be eating my nuts as soon as next week. We'll see, though. We'll see, though. All right? I'll talk to you dudes in the next video. Take care of yourselves, and of course, as usual, please have yourself a damn good one.